way the agenda is written, it has the header, you know, where it's going to be, and the time at the top, 6 p.m. And then you come down here, and there's a little print work session, 5.15. Uh, is this okay for an agenda to be like this? When you're looking at the agenda and you see it says six o'clock, you're thinking six o'clock, and then two days later, all of a sudden, you realize, ooh, there's a work session at five fifteen. Shouldn't a work session either have a separate agenda, or shouldn't the time of their say five fifteen if that's when they're really going to meet? Okay, free to shake your yeah, uh, yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> yes, I've always taken a very hard line position that um, work sessions working whatever they're called, um, are subject to, subject to the Open Meetings Act, just like any other regular meeting. And I also would suggest an agenda for that. I mean, in terms of type, font size, and all those things, the statute's not that specific. But um, clearly, in that case, if it was a separate meeting, I would <coughs> argue for a separate agenda. Let, let me show this. Even if the time up here would be different, to show when it actually started, you know, because it's before the other meeting. but. Yeah. If there's no time, and then it's down here. Well, right? and if there is no time or the time's not obscure, then it's not been properly public notice. But let me ask you all this question. How many of you have jurisdictions where votes are actually taken in work session? I've seen it before. Okay, it is not uncommon at all uh, throughout <coughs> Georgia for basically a city council or a county commission to actually have a separate business meeting that they call a work session and they're taking votes and, and ratifying action during those work sessions and the thing is it's not illegal so long as they've done two things uh, number one it's been public <coughs> noticed and number two there's a quorum present and Georgia defines a meeting in, in I think um, very broad ways but I'll tell you if, if we can collectively advocate for changes and improvements to Georgia's open meetings laws, there are two things that we need to address. One is how broad the privilege is for executive session. And number two, just strike the word quorum from the language. In Georgia, any number of any commission or council or board can meet and vote get all they want to so long as it's not a quorum. In many states, the law says that no two or more elected officials can deliberate the public's business in private. That ought to exist in Georgia and in every state in the nation. What happens in Georgia is that these two get together, these three get together, these four get together, and they build a voting block. And it's not illegal. We need to send a strong message that while it's not illegal, it is wrong. We had a commissioner tell us in the town hall meeting that they could talk by phone all they wanted to, and they just decided everything by phone ahead of time, and then they go and vote. And it's obvious that the meeting is Vote getting happens. He did, he did not say that. He did not say that. Not the way he just put it. I will tell you, though, vote getting happens everywhere. And the The intent of all public officials ought to be, and the message that we ought to resonate is, that all of the public's business should be done before the public. As citizens, we not only have a right to know what government does, we have a right to know why they're doing it. The deliberative process is what we're talking about, and those deliberations should be in front of you, not on the telephone, on an email, or behind closed doors. But so long as the language says that a meeting is made up of a quorum, legally, they can talk on the phone and, and, and get together in groups or two or three or anything less than a quorum all they want to. Now, do they have to? No. And so we can send a message that's not in the public's best interest. I promise to be brief. Um, I, you said to introduce yourself. I was at uh, Macon State College, now Middle Georgia State College, for 15 years in the office of the president. Um, and for three years, I, in my last 15 years, I was taken to private meetings and told to falsify documents and to keep. It goes on and on. I could write a book and I probably will. 
My point <laughs> is, <laughs> oh, I am. But uh, this is for your meeting on October 31st. I would, and I'd be happy to send it to you and just some bullets to ask Sam Owens. One, um, he, in fact, it's my understanding that he even has a statement on your website. I saw it a couple of years ago. Uh, Sam Owens had some kind of open transparency or open government. Was that? The, was I think you're thinking of Vernon Keenan, the GBA director. Okay, maybe. But anyway, I did see. Well, Owens does have that statement on his um, well, secretary. I mean the. Um, the Department of Law yeah. website where right. the, yeah, open, about government. open government. He is self proclaims open transparency, open government. Um, but in fact, in reality, on legal record, he does just the opposite. My uh, whistleblower case is a prime example, and nobody will touch it except CBS Atlanta came to my home in Macon. Of course, Macon, the newspaper won't touch it. But um, they even brought their film crew to my home. And what we've asked Sam, what I'd like you to ask Sam Owens is if he is mandating government transparency, why is he sealing the documents in my case? I have filed four motions, and believe me, the money I spent with attorneys, I, could, I lost my house, by the way, and filed bankruptcy after I lost my job. Because I stood up and said, I will not falsify these documents anymore, nine days later, after 15 years of exceed evaluation expectations, I was fired. Um, but I want you to ask Sam Owens, if you mandate open government, why are you, every time she files a motion, to lift the protective order? These depositions confirm everything in my whistleblower case, and he has filed, Sam Owens has filed, four motions opposing it. Now, but this is this a red flag to somebody? That there's something to hide? I, I will tell you, uh, first of all, send me your talking points. I know. And uh, open government's kind of like the weather. Everybody talks about it, but nobody ever does anything about it. And I have met very, very, very few people running for office that do not pledge transparency. But the rhetoric does not match the practice. And I'm not saying that about Sam Owens or Stefan Ritter. I'm saying that it's true. about a culture that exists that we are responsible for changing. May I say one more thing? Executive session, this is another thing that you can point out to him. When you mentioned executive session, I, it just, the, the stars just went up. Because in my case, and, and the, you've got to realize, this is not a Denise personnel case. This affects every faculty, staff, and student that's ever submitted an appeal to Board Regents and from 30 public colleges. I have a list a mile long, just pages and pages, of people that have contacted me saying, please get me updated. They wait even when we're talking about a class action lawsuit. They are criminally. As you know, that in the deposition in my whistleblower case, we found out that they don't even read the appeals. And Sam Owens wants that kept um, sealed. I intervened and use it, used it as an exhibit, and now it's open record. In other words, I went around him. And um, so that deposition is available to you. And it says repeatedly, no, we don't even look at them. She did not even know, by the way, that she was the vice chair. I had to tell my attorney. Well, let me tell you all that. <clears throat> Government, and we use that word in such a broad context, but, but whether it, it, it's an AG, a DA, a board chairman, uh, a commission member, does not have to agree with us about anything. But the law is the law, and, and they need to comply with the law. I do. You do know we're going after Rico racketeering on this, or do you know? Right. Okay. And, and, and I will tell you all that what's good for the goose is good for the gander, too. And you can't just sit and, and talk about openness and require openness in others and, and not be open and transparent yourself. And again, that's not just the AG's office, but, uh, you know, I've had county commissioners go along with things going on executive session for weeks, months, years, be a part of it, and then get mad. <coughs> and all of a sudden, they want to tell us everything that everybody else is doing, though they've been doing it themselves for a long time. That's why, again, I know I'm beating the same drum, that we need to create an expectation of openness. And the presumption should it always be that every record is there. The AG's office is not going to be our absolute remedy. So what are, our choices, what are our choices now? Uh, 
In other, words, in other words, go ahead and lose our second house that we've already lost our first. We just, just keep going. And that's what he's hoping. Well, and, and it might very well be that um, there are... I would are... just like his answer as to why he mandates right. open transparency, but seals these documents. That's all I'm asking. Well, it, it might... I will tell you my frustration with that, Jesus, okay? okay? The coming case everybody is looking at as being a landmark decision. The coming case is a baby step. It's a good baby step, but it's a baby step. Are you telling me that until somebody wanted to videotape a meeting and coming, that in two years nobody violated Georgia's Open Meetings Act? Do y'all know how many times the fine's been imposed? Until coming. Well, who doesn't no. know you can't film in a meeting? So, I mean, well, that's just Apparently, somebody does. <laughs> I mean, everybody has folks filming in meetings. Well, that's very common. Well, so, he's bragging about meetings and going out. But, yeah, but well, again, yeah. but again the, the point that I'm making is, is that that's just one small thing, and it's become a poster child. There must be, there, are, there have got to be more cases out there. Y'all keep pushing. I'm not telling you not, not to push push stuff to the AG's office. I'm telling you to push more stuff to the AG's office. Are you familiar with the Rule 60 motion? Are you yeah. familiar with the Rule 60 motion? It's, it's filed in Fulton County. It basically is going to throw out Sam Owens' a summary judgment, and it's going to allow me back in because of the new Georgia Supreme Court ruling on whistleblowers. That is our next step. If that happens, he'll start talking. I'm Sabrina Smith. I'm with Georgia Watchdogs, and 